So a few months back, it was being reported that XFL players would make on average $70,000 to about $100,000 per season. Now that was with the stars of the league making a little bit more all the way up to $250,000. And the guys who were basically just filling the roster making a minimum of 50 racks per season. But some of the agents of prospective XFL players have now been told that's the average that players are gonna make is $50,000, which like I just said, was previously reported as the lowest amount that you can make. So going from the lowest amount that you can make to the average amount made, you know, that's a big difference. In today's video, we're gonna discuss the new payment system based on what we understand according to information from XFL agents. And we're also gonna compare this new XFL salary to what you'd make in the NFL as a bottom tier player, what you'd make on the practice squad, and also what you'd make in the CFL. Which one is better? Without further ado, let's jump into it. Cue the way. Yeah, I'm not no quitter, cause I'm a go, I'm a go. So XFL players have seen their potential payout shrink significantly with it currently being reported that the average player will make $50,000 for the first season. Now that includes the base salary, a bonus for being active on game days, and a third bonus for winning games. A look at a tweet from Logan Brown Sports Management shows us how this actually breaks down for the average player. If you have a standard contract, the base salary is $27,000. Your per game active bonus is $1,600 and your win bonus is $2,200. Now XFL players will officially be employed starting December 4th and that goes through May 31st. So we're looking at about six months worth of employment. That breaks down to about 26 weeks worth of paychecks, but that means only 10 of those weeks, the actual game weeks, can be maxed out with the bonuses. So during that entire six month period where you're actually employed, you're only gonna qualify for bonuses during actual game weeks. You got 10 weeks of regular season games, then you got two more weeks that include the playoff and the championship game. For this video, we're only talking a regular season, so that's about 10 weeks, which is about two and a half months. So two and a half months out of the six months, you'll be able to get these bonuses. So if you're active for every game, you'll make an additional $16,850. So that really bodes well for players that can stay healthy. If you somehow went undefeated and won every single game, you get an additional $22,220 moving your max earning potential on the regular season to $66,110. Now, obviously most players on a standard contract are not gonna win every game, and a lot of players aren't gonna be active for every game. So I'm guessing that's how they came up with the 55K average. Regardless of how you feel about the pay structure this, and no matter what you say, ain't gonna be no tanking in this league. That's for damn sure. Like winning every game can almost double your income. So. Cass is trying to get these wins. Now again, this is for a standard contract. I'm not sure how many players on each team will have non-standard contracts. The quarterbacks are an obvious one that are gonna get paid a bit more and we'll have to see who else beyond that. Now, based on this new information, these XFL players on average are not making a ton of money, but I wanna compare that to the NFL minimum, NFL practice squad and the CFL as those are likely the only other options that will ever present themselves to these players, you know, at least in the near future. So the best case scenario for one of these cats would be a minimum salary on an NFL team. You go from the XFL to the lowest paid player on an NFL roster, that is a huge leap. You're talking about going from a maximum of $66,000 to a minimum of $495,000. Even being a practice squad player is a better situation financially. An NFL practice squad player who's on the practice squad for the entire season makes about $136,000. Again, once you compare that to the $66,000, it's more than double. So once again, a practice squad player is making more bread. What about the CFL, right? A CFL veteran makes on average $150,000. Now, obviously there's guys that make a lot more than that. There's guys that make a lot less than that. On average, a CFL veteran makes about $150,000. But the XFL is most comparable to the payment of a CFL rookie. A CFL rookie 
makes about 50 grand. Now, everybody in the XFL is technically an XFL rookie because this is the first year. So you stand to make the same, if not more money during your first year in the XFL versus during your first year in the CFL. Now, when it comes to earning potential, the CFL is an established brand. They've been around for a long time. So you get security there and you also know that the pay scale goes up. With the XFL, you hope the pay scale is going to go up, but you really have no idea if the league is even going to make it through the first season or past the first season. You hope so, but you don't know. Even with that being said, the XFL has some serious benefits over the CFL. For one, most of these players are from the United States and you're playing in the US, so boom. That right there in itself is a benefit. Also, the CFL has a brutal 21 week long season with 18 games played in the regular season. That's nearly twice as many as you're gonna play in the XFL. So you're getting paid the same as the CFL rookie, but you're only playing about half the games that they will have to play. That's actually a huge deal. You're making the same bread for like half the work. So now you have a much longer off season. You got six months on, six months off, and there's a lot of earning potential during that six months where you're off. So you can easily supplement your income and make more bread than you could if you were in the CFL because then more of your time would be spoken for. Also, the CFL is known for giving players a hard time when they gain interest from the NFL. If you've got a year left on that CFL contract, they make it nearly impossible to get out of it. So when that NFL team calls to fill a roster spot, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna have any mobility and any way to get out of that contract. If you're stuck in a two or three year deal, you're pretty much stuck in a two or three year deal. Then obviously by the time you get out of that contract, that's, the spot is gonna be filled. The XFL, however, will allow you to take advantage of other opportunities. The XFL has stated that any player from his league can walk away for the NFL after the XFL championship, which is April 25th. This gives you plenty of time to go and work out for any NFL team that wants to take a look at you if they're considering adding you to their roster or to their practice squad. And once again, like we already talked about, that is a significant pay bump if that happens. So having that flexibility in the XFL is a big deal. And it actually makes perfect sense for the XFL, at least early on. I mean, the more players from the XFL that can go to the NFL, the more credibility the XFL now has. Of course, I've got to bring up the AAF, a league that folded midway through the first season. Now, they promised players $70,000 in the first year, and they also promised that that would go up each of the next three years. Obviously, that never happened, but it seems that with them out of the picture, the XFL was comfortable dropping their salaries a bit. I definitely think the AAF played a major role in the XFL kind of dropping those potential salaries. For one, the AAF got in crazy money trouble and couldn't even pay the players. So if I'm the XFL looking at that, I'm like, well, I don't want to be in that situation. The lower the salaries, the lower the overhead. And then also there's no other competition in the US, there's no other pro football league other than obviously the NFL. And if any of these players can play in the NFL, they're gonna clearly choose that. If you can't play in the NFL, if you happen to be a guy that does not make one of those rosters, this is your only other option to play standard football, like not arena league, not indoor or anything like that. If you wanna play just regular football with the same or very similar rules to the ones that you grew up playing, this is that league, and $50,000 is more than you're gonna make playing in any arena league anyway. For the players, this might feel like a negative, and in the short term, it definitely is. But if you're looking at it from a long-term standpoint, this is something that could potentially help the league to stay afloat for a longer period of time. That's gonna help guarantee you a job year after year versus getting one payday that's pretty good and then the league folding shortly after. Anyway, that's all the information that we have on the XFL's current pay structure. We'll keep you guys updated as more information comes out. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're brand new, and let me know what y'all think about the new XFL pay structure. My name is Flimlo Raps. I'll let you next time, fellas. One. Yeah,